Hi, my name's Jeremy and I'm part of the SA Motor team. Today we're here at Topiary at Tea Tree Gully to cook with chef and owner Kane Pollard. Hi Kane, how are you? Good thanks Jeremy, how are you? Good thanks. What are we cooking today? Excellent, very excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Uh, so we've got some coastal rosemary smoked lamb's neck with a hung yogurt and some edible weeds, uh, poached quince as well. So a bit of a take on our lamb in the weeds dish that we've been running here for a little while that you can do at home. Um, and then we're going to use the cores and the skins of the quince, plus some more fresh quince, to do a quince and whiskey sour as well. Great, sounds delicious. Yeah. So where do we start? Alrighty, so we're going to start by getting the quinces poached and coloured up nice and ruby. Yep. So we've got some fresh quinces from just up the road, um, slightly more wild variety off the water. Um, so they're a little bit smaller, a little bit more astringent and intense in flavour. So you're part of Tasting Australia this year. Can you tell us a bit about uh, how you're involved? Absolutely. Um, yeah, so I'm taking the team here from Topiary up to Kuti Shack in Goolwa um, to do a bit of a collaboration. We're going to bring the, the wild plants and the seasonal pickles and herbs that we've put down throughout the past year. Um, and then Kuti Shack are going to bring the, the seafood element and we're going to yeah, set it all up in the dunes there in their beautiful little spot in Goolwa um, and serve a five course meal, which will be fun. Um, and then heading to Town Square as well, which I'm super excited about um, for the Wasted event featuring um, Karina Armstrong and Ben Devlin from Pippet Restaurant. Um, yeah. What's the ethos behind Wasted? Yeah, so basically trying to utilize um, parts of the plant or animal that you wouldn't usually use um, and not only showcase them, but um, yeah, shine a light, I guess, on those parts rather than the the cuts or the, the fruits or the vegetables that you might see on, on, an, on a normal menu, so yeah. yeah. And where did that inspiration come from? I mean, you mentioned earlier that this is something you've uh, been involved in since you were even a child. Um, yeah, I grew up in the Adelaide Hills uh, doing a lot of foraging and sourcing locally, um, cooking with my mum and yeah, using every part of the plant has just always been a, a general part of life um, for me. And then uh, once we started here at the Topiary, we, we bought it about 10 years ago just feel the vibes of that homemade, um, you know, cultured butter and sourdough and things that would have been made here many years ago. Sort of, so it feels natural to pick that back up and, and bring that into the restaurant. And we find a lot of inspiration in the old walls of the building. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, we went for a walk earlier to pick some, uh, or to forage. You know, can you tell us a bit about what we what we picked? Yeah, um, so yeah, we, we pick all of our own garnishes and herbs from within the surrounding area. Um, yeah, all in the, the same vein of, of uh, sustainability. I think foraging has that minimal impact. There's no, no packaging involved when you pick your own. You're getting the freshest, most in-season greens that you can possibly lay your hands on. Yeah, definitely. Um, so it makes a huge difference to the, to the end result. Uh, so yeah, we, we pick some, some plate garnishes, some varieties of pine and juniper. Uh, we got some purslane from just outside the gate here. So can you tell people at home how to prepare the quince for this dish? Yeah, so for this dish, we've taken the peels off and we've set them aside. Um, we're gonna cut either side of the core. So you end up with these beautiful quince cheeks, which we're gonna poach and serve with the lamb. Um, take the core and the extra little bits there, we're gonna juice that for our quince and whiskey sour later on. So nothing will be wasted here? Nothing will be wasted. Um, yeah, I mean, there's always gonna be bones or skins at some point ending up in the compost, but if you can draw as much flavor and nutrients and inspiration as you can from those bits and pieces before they make it there, then you know, you've got that extra layer. All right, so what's next? Alrighty, so we've got the quince cheeks ready to go with our pot here, so we'll pop those in. Uh, and then in order to get that beautiful, blushy, quincy rose type color, we're gonna add our acid, so just the juice of half a lemon squeeze that in there and then chuck that half in there as well yep and you got a bit of time and some yeah sugar. gonna add some time from the little garden over there um i think i mean super versatile you can add multiple things spices herbs um, I, I love using woody herbs rosemary and thyme when you're preparing something for a more savory situation so, so how much sugar for the six i'd say about half a cup of sugar for that amount we won't use all of that and then basically just cover it over with water. You can add a little bit of white wine or rosé to that if you happen to have some yeah. sitting around that you don't want to drink, which is, <laughs> you know. 
probably unlikely, but. And how long will these have to poach for? Alrighty, so we're gonna get them going. They'll poach for a couple of hours um, and we'll just keep topping up the water as they cook so that they can yeah, continue to develop in flavor and color. Um, and we're gonna make sure we keep the syrup later on. Um, we're gonna reduce that down, use that to glaze the lamb as well. So we'll start that on a higher heat just to bring it up to the boil. And then we'll drop it down low and just let it gently simmer away in the background. So you got lamb, lamb neck here? Yeah, lamb neck. So um, as part of the, the wasted ethos that we're running in the town square for Tasting Australia, we really want to try and utilise cuts that you wouldn't normally utilise at home. Um, actually did an event here at Topri a few years ago uh, called Waste Not Want Not. And we got in contact with a whole lot of butchers around the area um, and asked them, rather than buying whole animal, What's, what's, the, what's another way that we can help, help make a positive impact on, on the wastage of meat um, rather than buying it whole? And, and they said, yeah, absolutely. You'd have a, a better impact looking at cuts um, like tongue and neck and parts that you wouldn't normally sell in a butcher or people don't use a lot at home. Um, and so, so we got a whole lot of neck and we had a bit of a play around and came up with a few, few different ways to use it. And How are we using it today? So one of our favorite ways. So today we're going to take it off the bone and then we're going to cook it down in lamb fat. Um, if you don't have lamb fat at home, then you can use a, a vegetable oil or veg an oil that doesn't have too much flavor. Yep. Um, but ideally, in the, in the name of sustainability, you can start rendering your own fats from your roast chickens and roast lambs and things like that. And, clean it out at the end of the process and then just stockpile that in the fridge. So each time you want to cook, yeah, cook under fat or cook with the fat, um, you can reuse it, which is super handy. Next step for the lamb, um, we've got a big pot of lamb fat on here at the moment. Yep. Like I said, you can use oil instead, um, but this is lamb fat that we've stockpiled and it just keeps growing and growing in flavor. Um, we've got that on about a medium heat. We just want it to melt down. Um, and then we're going to lay the lamb next Gently inside. So how long will this, uh, how long will we cook this for? Um, if you have it bubbling away on your stove top, just got them sitting in there, completely covered. If you've got them bubbling away on your stove top, two to three hours should be fine. Um, you can also do them in the slow cooker overnight, uh, or you can put them in the oven and for five or six hours at about 130, 140 as well. So yeah, it's super versatile. There's such a good amount of fat in there that um, you can you can take it a little bit further if you need to. Yep. Or if you're not quite awake in the morning to grab it out. Yeah. But um, yeah, we've got some coastal rosemary here. We're going to use some to smoke uh, the lamb's neck later on, just a quick cold smoke before they go on the plate. Um, but I love to chuck some in the oil as well. And you pick that from around infuse. here? No, this one's actually sourced through something wild. Okay. Um, it's, a, it's a native green, so we're not allowed to pick it ourselves for restaurant service. But um, no, fortunate enough to have some amazing companies around the area that, that grow and forage uh, for these native herbs and, and uh, all the proceeds go back into the indigenous community, which is super important. Yeah. So yeah, we'll let that slowly bubble away. And then once it starts to fall apart, we'll know we're almost there. We're gonna bring it all together now on the plate. That's all done, ready to go. All right, so how's the lamb looking? All right, so our lamb is beautifully tender and almost falling apart. You can feel the, the fat's got some nice gelatinous vibe going there, not too bouncy. How are people gonna know that it's tender? Mm -hmm. What should they look out for? Uh, as important as taste, taste, taste yeah. is, is always. It's also just feel it, smell it. I think it's the the sensors really need to kick in there. Um, I've got the blowtorch. If you don't have a blowtorch at home, which is totally fair enough, um, you can just run the rosemary straight over a flame, a gas flame, just until it gets a little bit of fire going, and then we're going to put that back out again. Yeah, if they're not, if people aren't confident smoke, smoking something, it can the is the can the dish be. Can you avoid that? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It doesn't have to be smoked, but I think it's just one of those extra techniques that um, works really well with fat and sweetness um, and soundness from the yogurt as well. It all comes together and that smoke just adds an extra level. 
But yeah, you can absolutely, you can just pull it straight out of the fat. You can crispen it up in a pan to get those caramelized roast, um, roast lamb vibes as well, if that's what you're after. Um, yeah, you can sort of make, make it your own in a way. Open that one up. That one's gonna go on the plate there now. And then we're gonna grab our quince cheeks. Might need two for this size piece of lamb. I'm just going to slice that in a bit of a fan. So all the way down, probably two or three mils thick. Yep. Slide your knife underneath. And then that can go on top of your lamb. Here's the poaching juice that's been reduced right down. So that little bit of thyme in there gives it a little bit of a savoury element, which is great. So it's all glazed, uh, just garnishes now, is it? That's it, that quince reduction's glazed over the top. And it's time to finish with our hung yogurt and the garnishes that we picked earlier. So what do you got here? Awesome, so we'll start with the nasturtium. Um, that this time of year, without too much rain coming through, we're, we're seeing some really solid horseradishy heat coming from the nasturtium. So that works beautifully with our lamb dish today. So I've got some leek flowers here as well, which we can pop those on top. Just a little scattering, so each mouthful you get a really different burst of flavor. I've got some wild fennel that I picked on the way down this morning, from just up the road. I've got some fennel pollen there, which is a real deep aniseed flavor. And we're gonna finish it with our nice, bright, white, tangy hung yogurt on the side. And that's it. And Looks that's amazing. It. Awesome. So next we'll use the leftovers to make a drink. Can you tell us a bit about that? Absolutely. We're going to have the quince skins, cores and offcuts juiced up in our quince and whiskey sour. Kane, thank you very much for uh, showing us this dish today. Uh, absolute pleasure. Thanks for coming up. It was a lot of fun. Great.